Hello everyone, welcome back to Tech Haberdashery. So I have been working with the Dell Inspiron 113180 for the last few weeks with Linux. So in order to make this a somewhat more fair comparison, I've used two different versions of Lubuntu as well as going over to Linux Mint. And I am going to be comparing this to the Windows version. So there's some reasons I had to do that, which I will get into. But we'll start at the top in case you didn't see my initial review for this using Windows. I will go ahead and I'll give you a quick rundown of the specs. So this system has an AMD A69220E. Uh, that is the highest spec processor you can get in this chassis without going to the touchscreen model. It has a base clock of 1.6 GHz and will boost up to 2.4 GHz. It's got 4 GB of RAM at 1200 MHz, that is 1.2 GHz clock on the RAM, and the storage is 32 GB by a Dell eMMC card, so that is an embedded multimedia card. Since I know you want to know about the benchmarks first, I'm going to tear through the benchmarks real quick, and then we'll go on to my observations, and if you are a Linux aficionado, or somebody who's generally interested in Linux, you're going to care about that more, I suspect, as far as a user a friendly kind of perspective. So we'll start with Geekbench because that is the staple for, well, everything since it runs on everything. There's a significant disparity here between Linux and the Windows versions of Geekbench. In Linux, the single core thread got a score of 1,670 and a multi core score of 2,395. In both of these instances, Windows got 1,029 on the single and 1,615, so 1,615 on the multi. I'm going to make a broad assumption and say that this is just a result of the differences between the way Windows and Linux handle system resources, so that would accommodate our disparity there, but that's a theory on my part. I haven't actually dug into that to see how true it is, but this seems to be fairly common among raw benchmarks that are somewhat in the abstract. It doesn't really give you any real tangible information that you can use from it being that it's just a arbit fairly arbitrary score. So on my video of the prior model, the 113162 a couple of years ago, I did a lot of comparisons between Windows and the Linux operating system that I was using at the time, so I'm going to continue that same theme here. We're going to start with uh, storage benchmarks. The internal read storage for this system under Linux ran at 169 megabytes per second. Under Windows it was 143.1. So a little bit faster, you're probably not going to notice it in day-to-day -day use. For the write speeds, this system got 106.3 megabytes per second while Windows did 112 megabytes per second. So writing to the drive seems to be a little bit faster under Windows, but this is effectively a wash because you're not really going to be doing a lot of reading and writing to this system, especially, you know, it's not going to be any workload heavy stuff. The CPU is just not going to handle it very effectively. The micro SD card under Linux got 32.2 megabytes per second on the read which nearly matches the Windows read speed of 31.56 megabytes per second, so we'll call that a wash as well. Uh, looking over to the write speed, we do see a pretty significant difference here, however. The write speed under Linux, under Lubuntu specifically, is 14.4 megabytes per second, while under Windows, it is 30.43 megabytes per second. So you're looking at double the write speed under Windows. I think that Windows has just got the storage management for micro SD cards sorted out a little bit better than Linux does. When it comes to USB 2, because the system does have a USB 2 and a USB 3 port, under USB 2 the read speed, read speed, haha, is 16.4 megabytes per second. Under Windows it was 31.3. So again, looking at nearly double the score for the uh, USB 2 under Windows. If we're looking at the write speeds, it is 4.2 megabytes per second under Lubuntu and 11.43 megabytes per second under Windows. So you're looking at almost three times the write speed under Windows for USB 2. 
Fortunately for Linux, that seems to be where the uh, significant disparities when it comes to storage disappears, as under USB 3 performance, the read is 133.8 megabytes per second compared to Windows 127.9. So we'll call that one a tie as well. For the write speeds, that's 21 megabytes per second for Lubuntu and 18.25 megabytes per second under Windows. So also a tie there, I would say. I mean, the Lubuntu has a very minor edge in both of these scenarios for USB 3, if that matters at all to you. What really shocked me most when it comes to battery life is that on Windows you can consistently get between five and a half and six hours of battery life until you hit 10% remaining. Uh, under Lubuntu, I consistently got between three and a half and three hours and 45 minutes. So three hours, 30 minutes to three hours, 45 minutes. Uh, this is in, you know, when it comes to every usage and it's just daily usage as I would normally use it. It's uh, streaming video, it's looking at local video from the internal storage or simply writing up documents, whatever the case may be. It's it was surprising to see that. I was, I just didn't expect it. That generally, in my experience, Linux has better battery life than Windows does. So, take that for what you will. But that's not the end of the story, and we'll talk more about it later on. Under Ubuntu, the video streaming performance was not great, but it was also not terrible. If you want to use Firefox or Chromium, Opera, Brave, whatever tickles you you go right ahead, it's going to be about the same. But I do want to stress that this is the performance under Lubuntu. I also ended up later on putting Linux Mint on this system and it performs significantly better and we're going to talk about that. But for now know that the latest release of Lubuntu video performance does not perform nearly as well as the prior release. The prior release being 18.04 LTS the version I initially tested on here was 18.10. The last actual benchmark I can give here um, is that the audio editing using Audacity of a 26 minute WAV file to export it to an MP3 under Lubuntu took 1 minute 3 seconds, under Windows it took 1 minute 56 seconds, so it's about double the amount of time. And lastly, the install time. I guess I should have mentioned this up front because you're going to be installing the OS first, right? The install time for Lubuntu 18.10 took 8 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, that's with all of the default settings and clicking install now and getting to the desktop. Under Windows it was 17 minutes 27 seconds. So audio exporting, which is fairly subjective but I can time it, is about half of what you get under Windows and same thing for the OS install time. You're looking at right at 17 and a half minutes would be double so yeah it's looking at right at double the install time for uh, Lubuntu if you're going to do Windows instead so half the install time for Lubuntu I should say that's probably a bit wiser so that's it for the benchmarks now let's look at some of my other system observations so my first thing off and, and I love this to death really this desktop environment doesn't use KDE I, I was kinda of thinking it did but not knowing enough about the different Linux desktop environments. But this actually uses LXQt. It looks very nice. It's similar to older Linux desktops, which I personally prefer. Uh, there's some very good themes you can change or install to edit it to your preferences. The default file manager shows a 128 tebibyte drive. I don't know why it shows the drive to be that large, but if you run the terminal command of df-h, it shows the correct sizes. 29 gigabytes total is shown with 22 gigabytes of space free. That is a massive improvement over the Windows install, which I think gave us like right at 9 gigabytes free out of 27 available. So, hooray for Lubuntu. It's not a long term service agreement uh, or long term support, so it's not LTS. I said service agreement, I'm sorry. I meant L long term uh, support. So, it's not an LTS release, so maybe that's just where some of these bugs are coming in. Uh, it's less focused on guaranteed stability. I did a little digging and found out that the version of LXQt that the system is using is 0 0.13. Maybe that indicates it's an earlier release, 
I don't know. Um, I just don't know enough about the version of LX Cute that Lubuntu is putting on here to say with any authority. What was really impressive about this, and this is always impressive about Linux, is that the entire system update only took 300 megabytes. So that was that's great. Uh, and this last part right here, I don't know if I should blame this on Dell, or Ubuntu, or whatever, but um, whenever this system does anything remotely stressful, the CPU pegs out at 100%. It's odd, to say the least, uh, which I know it's doing a lot of work under Windows as well, but I was really shocked to see that under Lubuntu. Another thing that really surprised me, and this is again a bit subjective because everybody's going to use their laptops differently, especially on battery life, or battery power, the battery life is just atrocious on this thing, and it's a, the total opposite of the Inspiron 113162, the model I reviewed in 2016. Using Windows on the system, you're going to get two and a half to three hours better battery life. The curious thing to me is that the CPU is being so heavily taxed, but we saw the same behavior in Windows, but yet Windows seems to be able to handle the battery life a little bit better. I thought maybe this has to do with the Linux desktop environment that I'm using. Uh, so I tried Lubuntu 18.04, uh, which uses the LXDE desktop. Uh, and hoping for some different results, and unfortunately I get about the same thing. It's minor improvements, but it didn't even add an additional 10% of overall battery life. So, I mean, three and a half, four hours is the best you can look for under Lubuntu. Mighty number no. 9 will not run at all. It loads a splash screen, and then the system freezes before eventually needing to kill the process via terminal. I will say that the Orwell game, the point-and-click adventure that I tested under Windows in my first video, it does run much better on 18.04 than it does under 18.10. My theory behind this is that the LXQt desktop is memory and graphics demanding, and that's why the system is so heavily under load. Kind of as evidence to that, 18.10 uses 1.5 gigabytes of RAM while idle at the desktop, while 18.04 uses 668 megabytes of RAM. Also, that missing AMD chipset from 18.10 makes me wonder if the Linux kernel doesn't have the correct drivers for whatever hardware is in this system. And I do want to be clear, I'm not utterly and entirely blaming Lubuntu for all of this. I don't think that their decision to go to the LXQ desktop is unreasonable, uh, and I don't think it's unreasonable for them to design an operating system that has more than 72 megabytes of graphics memory. It's okay to design a, U a GUI to work with more memory because most systems nowadays, you know, probably have, I would imagine, 128 megabytes or 256 megabytes at the absolute worst. It's also added to the fact that the LXDE desktop is a depreciating technology. Softpedia has an article which highlights this, and they quote Simon Quigley, I hope I pronounced that correctly, he's one of the Lubuntu release managers, and he says, quote, We decided that going forward, we need to adapt to the current state of the market. Therefore, our main focus is shifting from a distribution whose main focus is providing a distribution for old hardware to a functional yet modular distribution focused on getting out of the way and letting users use their computer, end quote. I would argue that the moving from old hardware probably does away with the low VRAM mindset. If anything, I think this is more of a fault of Dell and or AMD for designing a system this way. To also be fair to Dell, they didn't make this CPU with the idea that it'll be running Linux, so there really isn't any official support for it. My closing thought on this is that it must be an oddity of the environment. Running a different desktop environment didn't improve the performance in the least. Even under GNOME 3, the system performance was equally poor, but we know that GNOME 3 is a little taxing when it comes to system resources. Uh, so that's why I completely wiped the system in favor of another operating system. And that other operating system was Linux Mint. I am a secret lover of Linux Mint. It uses the XFCE interface, and I decided to run it for a couple weeks and my observations are along these lines here. It's better battery life, running at just about five hours and maybe a little more, depending on if you cut back on the video. 
The system appears to be more responsive overall. It very sparingly do web pages hiccup or freeze when they're loading. YouTube videos load better at 720p, though I'm not sure 1080p is really recommended. There's not a lot of stuttering, but it's not perfect under Firefox. Linux Mint seems to be the best overall OS for this unit, given that it's very lightweight and it's very clean. There's a strong argument for running Windows if you're okay with using the Microsoft OS specifically in regards to Edge for watching video. That said, we know that Edge will be switching over to Chromium's rendering engine soon, so the performance that you'll the performance benefit that you'll get using Edge is going to be temporary at best. And this of course does not address the very reasonable and potential privacy concerns that are rampant within Windows 10. So that's it. That's all I've got. I hope that this has helped you in some way. Uh, it's been a long and at times frustrating ordeal for me, so feel free to ask questions if there's anything that I can test or work on to try to help answer some questions. I'm more than happy to. The link to the Softpedia article is going to be in the description, and so are the links to my comparison spreadsheet on Google Docs. That's it. That's all I've got. I hope you all have an awesome one. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.